Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation, waves of energy. But unlike water waves and sound waves, which need water or air to travel in, electromagnetic radiation can travel through the vacuum of space. And that's very important, because if that wasn't true, we wouldn't see the stars that twinkle in the night sky, and we wouldn't get any energy from our sun, so there couldn't be any life if that wasn't so. Now, it turns out that digital cameras, or your camera on your mobile phone, or the video camera here, can actually see more colours than you can with your own eyes. And I need to demonstrate that inside. So this is a standard TV remote control. You press a button and it sends a signal to your TV to change channels. And the way that it works is at the top of the TV remote control, I think you can see there's a little light, a little LED light. And when you press a button, it actually flashes that light uh, and sends the signal over to your television. Now if I press a button now, I can't see anything at all. And the reason is because this LED sends light out in the infrared. Now our eyes are sensitive from the red through the colours of the spectrum to violet. But they're not sensitive to this type of red, this infrared. But digital cameras are. If I turn on my little camera here, and hopefully you can see, you make me out there on the screen. If I hold up the remote control to it and press a button, you can see it flashing away beautifully. Can't see anything now, and I can see it flashing away beautifully. And the reason is, of course, because these digital cameras are actually sensitive to the infrared. So we can actually use this effect to be able to take beautiful infrared photographs. So in order to take infrared photographs, we need to modify our digital camera. And this is a standard digital camera I got on the internet. I think it was about 18 pounds. Um, we also need the infrared filter. And again, I got this on the internet. I think this was about five pounds, maybe even cheaper. And it's a device that only lets the infrared through. So it blocks the visible. So it block all the way from red to violet in the visible. But it will let the infrared through. And you need a tube. Um, a cardboard tube won't do. It needs to be something quite dense like plastic or metal. This is a proper camera fixing. It happens to fit the uh, filter very well. And I've modified it by putting some rubber at the end. And that allows us to make a very simple adapter which just literally fits onto the camera lens like that. And now we have a digital camera that's capable of taking infrared photographs. Okay, so turn on the camera. I'm going to adjust it so that I'm photographing the thing I want to photograph. Then I'm going to take a visual picture. So I've got that. Then I add the infrared filter. Got to remember to turn off the flash so I can set that. And then I'm going to set it to the 10 second timer. And that's now counting down 10, 9, Eight. And of course with the 10 second timer, I can just leave it nice and steady on the tripod. Three, two, one. And the camera's automatically taken an infrared photo. So now before I turn it off, I need to remove the infrared filter and then turn it off. So let's have a look at some of the visible and the infrared images we've taken. The first pair shows the blossoms we took on the tree. And you can see on the left hand side we've got a beautiful image of blossoms, on the right hand we've got the infrared image. Now of course materials that absorb light tend to look black because the light falls on it and it's all absorbed and nothing comes back. And materials that don't absorb much tend to reflect the light and they look white. So on the visible you can see that the branches are quite dark and the blossoms are, are bright. But on the infrared everything looks sort of snowy white. And the reason is that some organic material like chlorophyll, for example, uh, doesn't absorb in the infrared at all, really. So the infrared that hits it just gets reflected back and it looks like this sort of snowy whiteness. It's rather beautiful. The second image is of me outside the house. And you can see it's quite interesting, both the t-shirt and the jeans are quite white. And many materials or clothes actually don't absorb much in the infrared. So the t-shirt, which is a brown t-shirt, actually looks quite white. So, uh, luckily, it doesn't transmit too much, otherwise you might see more than you should. 
The third picture is dandelions. I love this picture. On the left-hand side, you can see the grass and the beautiful dandelions. The infrared image is quite puzzling at first. You can hardly make out the dandelions. And that's because presumably both the, gr the grass and the yellow dandelions aren't absorbing too much in the infrared. But there are some black things you can see. What are they? It took me a while to find out, but when you look at uh, the pictures, you realize the black things are dandelions that haven't opened up yet. So presumably at night, the dandelions close up to protect themselves. Uh, there might be a frost, for example. So if they can close up, they can insulate themselves a little bit. If they could close up on a material that absorbs infrared, that would be even better because the infrared that the Earth's giving out at night, it could absorb and perhaps stop it from getting so cold. And that's exactly what you see. The dandelions that are closed up are actually darker, which is amazing. The final pair of photographs of the sky. So you can see some houses there. And the thing is that water droplets, because of their size in, in the cloud, pretty much affect infrared and visible to the same amount. But haze, which is much smaller droplets, affects light, visible light, much more than infrared. It's almost as if the infrared can cut through the haze. And as a result, you get these startling images. You can see the vapor trails of the aircraft and also clouds that just aren't visible on the visible, you can see them clearly on the infrared. And this is actually what weather satellites use. To look down on the Earth, they use infrared because they can see the clouds and the weather clouds, and they can also make out the countries below. Where if, if they use visible, the haze sometimes stops you being able to see the countries, and then it's difficult to know where you're looking at. So infrared photography is also very useful for weather predicting. One final thing that's quite fun is that I found that printer ink absorbs infrared very well, so it looks quite dark, but marker pen doesn't. So if you want to send someone a secret message, what you can do is you can print out your secret message, then go over it with a marker pen so that no one can read it. Then if you take a picture in the infrared, you'll see through the marker pen and be able to read the secret message.